Welcome to the shop, Steve here at SKS Props, and in today's video, we're going to be continuing my Retro Monster Mass series with the creature from the Black Lagoon. Now, this guy is made completely out of my HD foam, which you, of course, can find over at Blick Art Materials. And the thing that's great about this simple retro style monster mask series are these are the basic foam fundamentals that you need to start your journey as a foam smith. Now, I want to show you guys all the steps that it takes to put the creature together. So let's go ahead and get started. Like my other builds, I created a proof of concept mask that I used to create my final templates. These templates were transferred onto some 6mm HD foam with a pencil and cut out with a utility knife. To get clean cuts, always remember to sharpen your blade at the beginning of each project and throughout as needed. Because of the precision cuts of the eyes, I switch over to a small scalpel blade. I then go ahead and transfer and cut out all the additional facial details I need for the 6mm HD foam. Contact cement is used to close up the darts at the top of the mask. Any additional adhesive is wiped away with a scrap piece of foam. A brush on two layers and allow that to dry, and once tacky, the foam is pressed firmly together. These small cuts glued together allow the mask to have a slight curve. I use my Dremel rotary tool with a flex shaft attachment and a smooth sanding drum to refine all the edges. This technique helps me clean up the cuts and gives it a more professional finish. The remaining facial details that I need are traced onto some 2mm HD foam. Depending on the complexity of the piece, these are cut out with utility blades, some shears, or the scalpel blade. Of course, his gills are going to be the most detailed piece on this particular build. This piece is also transferred onto some 2mm HD foam and note all the holes. These will help me uniformly line up all the gill cuts. The gill piece is carefully cut out with a scalpel blade, and then I use some shears and line up the holes to make the gill detail cuts. Now this is a time consuming process, but in the end it looks awesome. You only need to do it five more times. Once all the gill pieces are cut out, I can start to assemble the facial details. I'm going to start off with the eyebrow. This piece is super glued into place and matches the curve of the eye. Next I'm going to attach the eye bag. This piece will also start in the corner and then wrap around to the middle. Go ahead and attach the other piece, you're just trying to mirror the opposite side. To attach the mouth, I first lightly mark it with a pencil to make sure the placement is correct. This piece is attached with some super glue. Now notice I'm leaving a small gap at the bottom. This will be important for later on. Next, I'm going to attach the lower jaw, and to do that, I'm going to put adhesive on this tab and line it up with the bottom of the mask. Now you can attach the opposite side, this will give the lower jaw a slight curve. An adhesive line is marked onto the lower teeth and glued into place along with the top teeth. Now I'm going to attach the gills, and remember that small gap that I left at the bottom? This is where the gill is going to start. The inside perimeter of this piece is lightly marked and super glue is applied. Then it's just a process of following the line until the piece is fully attached. You can then mirror this same technique to the opposite side. For the next scale, this one is placed slightly higher. You can see exactly where I'm putting it in the video. Super glue is once again applied and both sides can be lined up as even as possible. The lowest gill will attach to the jaw. I line the corner of this piece up to the bottom of the teeth. Once again, I'm marking it before I add the adhesive, that way everything lines up just right. As with the other masks in this series, I want to add a little bit of reinforcement. So I cut a 1 inch strip of 2mm HD foam. This is going to be glued and help the mask retain its shape. I start by attaching the strip in the middle and then at each end while the mask is curved. Next up, I'm going to attach the lips for the creature. The lower lip is marked, glued on, and you can see how it lines up with the inside of the mouth. The upper lip is marked and glued on, but I start in the middle because the sides have a slight overhang. Now because of the slight curve at the top of this mask, we have these visible seams. To get rid of those and cover them up, I'm going to be using some 2mm HD foam facial details. Just like the lower details, these are lightly marked onto the mask so there's no guessing when I'm gluing them down. I've got one more seam to cover in the middle of the mask, and just like the other ones, this is marked, glued, and put into place. To give this mask some additional wrinkled details, I've got these small strips that will go above the eyebrows and right above the nose. 
Because the creature is supposed to have these little bumps all over his face, I cut some out of 2mm foam with some shears. Now I didn't want too many of these, just enough to give it something a little extra. As you can see, I'm done with the fabrication side of my creature mask, and these retro style monster masks have been really fun to put together, and also a challenge to keep them stylistically looking all the same. But this is hopefully the kind of thing that even years from now, people can come back to the channel, download these, print them off, and learn the fundamentals to foam smithing. Now it's time to talk about painting him, and to do that, just like my other builds, we're gonna be using the FX brand to paint and prime, so let's go ahead and jump into the painting process. I do a light heat treatment to the mask, making sure to wear my respirator. FX Clear Primer will be my first layer, and this will help smooth the foam out and get it prepped for the paint. The FX Primer is applied with a one inch flat brush to minimize the brush strokes. Always on a deadline, a hair dryer is used to speed up the dry time. For the main color layer, I'm going to be trying the FX Nuclear Neon Series Jolt. This paint is applied directly out of the bottle, also with a 1 inch flat brush. Now one thing that I notice is that this paint is pretty thin, so after the first coat dries, I go ahead and I start a second layer. For the darker facial details, I'm mixing in the color Jolt with the FX color Smashing. This paint is applied with a small filbert brush to minimize the chance of it getting onto the main color. I can also tell that the satin series is definitely a thicker paint, so I do try to make sure to pull the paint in the direction of the piece. That way if there are brush strokes, they look purposeful. Now because this is a 3D prop, I'm constantly moving it to different angles to get places that I wouldn't normally see, and using smaller detail brushes to paint the sides of the 2mm foam. For the lips, I start with the FX color Enchanted. I plan on darkening it, but this will give me a good base. I go ahead and add the color Bloodline to Enchanted to darken up the hue of the paint. This mixture is applied with a filbert brush, making sure not to get it onto the green color that I already have down. I then paint on some additional wrinkles using the Jolt and Smashing mixture and a very fine detail brush. For the final touch, the creature's teeth are painted with the FX brand Blizzard. So in my pursuit to teach you guys about artistic products and my reviews of them, I'm going to let you know that I'm not entirely happy with the green that's on my creature mask. Again, that was done with the FX Nuclear Neon Jolt, and it's just not all that great of a coverage. You know, from afar it probably looks fine, but up close it's not a consistent coverage. I really wish that I had stuck with the satin paints and mixed together the Goblin and the Smashing to make my own color. From what I can tell, these Jolt paints are very, very thin and they act more like a glaze than anything else. I actually did a test piece, which I wish I would have done this beforehand, uh, which also goes to show you, if you're going to try out a new product, don't do it on your final version, <laughs> do a test piece first. But this is the Goblet and this is the Jolt on top, which it did cover considerably better. But I don't feel that the Nuclear Neon paints cover as well on their own. So that's just my two cents and maybe that's exactly how they're supposed to work, but I figured I'd let you guys know. Just like my other monster masks, I'm going to be using some black chiffon cloth and low temp hot glue to cover the eyes and the mouth. This cloth allows the wearer to see out while the viewer can't see in. After the hot glue cools, any additional fabric can be cut away. After the eyes are complete, hot glue is placed at the bottom of the mouth and a large section of cloth is pressed into place. Now I like to add additional hot glue around the perimeter of these sections just to make sure that they don't accidentally pull free. Now it's time to strap the mask, and in my other videos I use tri-glides to make this strap fully adjustable. If you didn't want to be that complicated with it, you could just use a single strip of 1 inch elastic. The elastic is cut to 12 inches in length, then hot glued on the side of the mask slightly above the eyes. Once the hot glue is cooled, the same thing is done to the opposite side, and then a small piece of upholstery foam is pressed into the forehead. This will slightly move the mask away from the face and make it more comfortable. And now our creature mask is complete.
So you can see the steps that it takes to put together my templates for the Creature from the Black Lagoon, another awesome addition to my Retro Monster Mass series. Now remember, all of these templates are absolutely free. Just go over to my website, sksprops.com, download them, build them, customize them, make them unique to you. And remember, if you're building any of my builds or using HD phone, be sure to tag me at sksprops on Twitter and Instagram because I want to see your creation. Until next time, build your best with the best. HD phone.